Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to another Supernatural Saturday. I hope you're all staying safe and well, maintaining social distancing, washing your hands, all that jazz. Today I finally conquered my fear of heights and did the CN Tower. It was wild. Like when you're looking out, you can see the Billy Bishop Airport and you can see planes flying under you because that's how high up you are. The elevator was low key. It was terrifying. Up and down. You can feel the entire thing shaking and moving and it was like almost a minute long. And I know that doesn't sound long, but think of how long you're usually in an elevator. It's like maybe 10 seconds. Now make that a minute, but the entire thing is glass and you're going up 114 stories pretty quickly. Anyways, if somebody doesn't like heights, that was a lot for me. However, it was such an amazing experience. I would do it again. It's so cool. Like when you're up there on the sky deck and you can see the entire city and also the big like lake and all the Toronto islands, just all around. Very cool. Highly recommend if you're ever in the city. So today I was going to talk about the Annabelle story because it was suggested to me with all the things that have been like happening and coming up and how she like quote unquote apparently escaped her box in the Warrens Museum. All of that thing. So I thought it was cool. I did some digging and I'm sorry to report folks. It's all fake. She would never escaped. Nothing crazy like that has happened recently with her. Still a very interesting story and I'll definitely talk about it if you want at some point, but it's also been done quite a bit. Like it's one of the more popular ones. Um, BuzzFeed Unsolved did a really funny one. Okay, well, I guess there's no more getting around it. We, we could take one step at a time if that makes you feel better. One. Okay, well, you're just gonna go then, okay. Hey, lady. Oh, okay, you, yeah, good, go for it. Well, that's her. I do like that they have this out here as a nice reminder. They actually don't know why that's there. Apparently, Ed stapled that to this box, which was specially constructed to make her con contained. Apparently, the wood is soaked in holy water. Well, that's good. Can you jump into my body? You could think of this guy as a very big doll. I'm gonna lock you up inside my body like a little canary. Jesus Christ. You're gonna be stuck inside my ribcage forever. What do you think of that, Annabelle? Check that out if you're interested too. But yeah, so I was gonna talk about her, but I've changed the story to something that's not as well known. So yeah, let's get into that. The lesser known one I have chosen is in St. Andrews by the Sea in New Brunswick. It's the Algonquin Resort. So the Algonquin was established in 1883. It does have a very similar history to the Banff Hotel. It was also one of the original hotels on the Canadian Pacific Railway. In 1914, there was also a fire that destroyed pretty much the entire building except for, I think it was two wings. And this hotel as well in its esteem has received its fair share of famous visitors, including Theodore and Franklin Roosevelt, Prince Charles, Princess Diana, as well as Sir John A. Macdonald, and virtually every prime minister since the Confederation of Canada. So one thing I've noticed is, I don't know what it is with hotels, but there always seems to be a bellman and a bride of some sort, as well as like a particular room that everyone knows about. For many people, the activity at the Algonquin is strange just because like it's, there hasn't really been any like unpleasantries. Like in the Banff there was the like murder-suicide and the secret room and there was a lot of mystery around it but like there was nothing like that that happened here. Another fun fact is um, it's reported that Stephen King stayed here because so Stephen King lives in Maine and from Maine till St. Andrews is like, it's not that far. So it's reported that he stayed here and the Algonquin may have inspired parts of like the Outlook Hotel from The Shining. Let's start getting into 
the ghosts that roam the halls of the Algonquin Hotel. There's a watchman whose footsteps are just heard constantly because he's on the watch type of thing. So he's walking, you can hear just like big heavy boots going through the halls as well as like clanking of keys. But if you go to look to see who it is or like what's happening, there's nobody there. He's um, specifically heard in the service tunnels and in the Matthew House residence. There's another bellman. Um, he has no name, unfortunately, that I could find, but it's said that he's also very helpful and likes to chat with guests and ask them about their stay and just like make pleasant conversation. So another super friendly bellman ghost that likes to stay at the resort. One of the more sad ghost is the ghost of a little boy. It's said that he had died in the hotel um, before the fire, so like a long time ago. And he passed away by chasing his favorite ball out a third story window. Apparently he can just be seen like around the third floor playing with his ball. And there's also a photo of him and it is one of the most famous paranormal photos in the province and I think of in the country so like in the corner of this photo you can very faintly see the silhouette of a boy and it looks like he's looking at something and people think he's just he's looking at his ball so it's quite quite interesting with that room 308 and 373 have also been reported to be active. However, with either of these rooms, there's no like particular story attached to them. People have like heard voices, felt things, cold spots, have seen full bodied apparitions of like men and women. Um, so nobody's really sure who these people are, where they're coming from, and why they're attached to these particular rooms. Room 473 is where the ghost bride is most commonly seen. Apparently she was staying at the Algonquin the night before her wedding. She was to marry a merchant sailor who had been sailing out of St. Andrews. There's two accounts of what happened. The first account is that while he was at sea, he encountered a really bad storm and was unable to get to shore um, when he was supposed to, so he was late to the wedding because of the shore and he could not get communication back to land. And then the second version of the story is that he got cold feet and like stood her up kind of thing didn't come. Whichever account is true, the bride believed that her fiance had stood her up, left her at the altar, and it's reported that she, quote, took to her suite in hysterics, and the next day she was found dead in her room. Romantics like to say that the bride died of a broken heart. However, it's more plausible that she died by suicide. The hotel staff frequently received complaints of crying and screaming coming out of 473. The bride's silhouette can frequently be seen roaming around or like white, like not necessarily her full figure, but also like white spots can be seen moving around. Lots of orbs if you're like videotaping or taking photos. People also have reported that the silhouette of the bride can be seen in the hotel's highest tower, which is interesting because like, so you can see the tower from the outside. It's like, it's the tallest tower and has quite a few windows. So people see that they can see her like walking around, like it's like a spiral staircase inside of it, I guess. So they can see her like passing the windows. However, hotel staff report that it's impossible somebody could be up there because like, the hotel doesn't even have a key there anymore. Apparently it was lost years ago. So it's just interesting that frequently something or someone is seen through there, but the hotel itself is claiming they don't have a key to that area. Another perplexing element to the story of the ghost bride is that apparently um, a puddle of water 
can frequently be found in the middle of the room, but it always like blunders or like confuses maintenance and hotel staff because it's never from a leaky pipe, not coming out of the roof. And again, with the romantics of, I don't even know what that means. Like, what does it mean to be like, oh, a rom how romantic for somebody to die of a broken heart? Like, I don't know, it just sounds sad. But again, it's reported that romantics say that this puddle is the bride's tears that she cried the night she died of a broken heart. Do with that as you will, but there's just a mysterious puddle that frequently will form in the room. People have also claimed to see the bride on the roof. However, um, many people contradict this and say it's somebody completely different. There's not really reports as to who else it could be, but apparently if you're on the roof of the hotel, you can frequently see like a white mass just like floating around and there's like, it's apparently people like tested it out and it's not like light anomalies or mist or fog or anything like that. It's just like this strange like, white hovering blob, I guess, um, on the roof. So kind of strange is that if she's not the bride, like the thing on the roof, if it's not the bride, it's referred to as the lady in white and there's no particular story associated with her as well. All right, folks, I know this has been a shorter video today, but I had a lot of fun looking into this. What do you think about it? Have you ever been to the Algonquin? Have you ever been to St. Andrews by the Sea? I've been to St. Andrews many times. Like I grew up in New Brunswick, so it's a super fun spot to be, but I've never actually been to the Algonquin. It's kind of fun because like it's a small town and the Algonquin is this big, beautiful hotel. So you can see it wherever you are in the city. So I've seen it many, many times. I've seen the outside, I've driven all around, I've gotten really creepy and like driven right up to the doors, but I've never like stayed a night in the hotel. So I'm a buckleless. Hope to do that at some point. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see next. I talk about true crime on Tuesday and supernatural things on Saturday. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see all the things I post. Um, make sure to be following me on Instagram and give me a like on Facebook to join our wider community. All right, stay safe out there folks and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.